Okay, so now we've got a common problem on the top joint. Yeah, this is, we see these almost every day, to be honest. So this is the top joint of a clarinet, the link key that comes across from the top to bottom joint. Sometimes it's called the bridge key because it bridges the top and bottom joint. And I don't know if you can see this cork here is kind of shredded off. Now this is so common and the main cause of this is during assembly. So it can happen the, the moment you take your clarinet out of your case. And it's basically where the top and bottom joint come together. We suggest that you would hold that key down to get this lever up and out of the way. But a lot of people, if you're in a hurry or you're just trying to get out of class quick or whatever, just wouldn't. And these levers can clash. And as you can see, that will just take that cork away and off. And, um, and then eventually, when there's no cork left on that bridge, um, this won't be lowering this key as far as it should and you lose that note. Yeah, it's a long B flat and yeah. you can get clanky as well, can't it? Very, it? yeah, rattly as well. Yeah, definitely. doesn't help. Anywhere where you've got metal hitting metal is not good, really, because you don't want a percussive woodwind instrument. <laughs> Some extra element to your playing. Yeah. So we'll take that cork off and we'll stick a new one on. This is like a special type of cork. This is quite cool stuff, actually. This is Yamaha Hypertex cork. And we sell this, but it's a rubberized cork. Um, so it's not a natural cork that you'd see on the tenons of the clarinet. These are like a very natural, as they come, kind of cork. But this is a rubberized kind of compound. It's all and why do they use mushed that? together. Well, it's more durable, which is great for certain areas on the clarinet where keys are hitting each other a lot. So areas of high traffic on the key work or high contact or anything like that. It's way more durable, it's way more stable, meaning it doesn't compress in the same way. Natural cork is full of air and will compress over time. That's why your tenon corks over time become looser and looser. But this stuff's really, really strong and stable and much more um, kind so of equipped for this From a job. regulation point of view, once the right um, thickness is on it, because of that lack of compression it should stay in regulation that's the idea yeah, yeah that's the plan is that as long as this ripping off doesn't happen that this one piece of cork technically should do the job for for as long as possible so just applying the glue to the back yeah. of the cork yeah so for gluing corks on keys contact adhesive is the one you never want to use super glue if you can help it um, this stuff's awesome because you would just wait for that to get touch dry and then they'll bond together and they'll make a really, really nice fit. It's just quite a neat way of doing it. And I say this is really common. So this is something to look out for. If you're, um, if you're assembling your clarinet, then it's worth being mindful of. But if you're having problems with that note as well, then you could maybe have a look at this lever and see how, um, how that cork's looking. Because nine times out of ten, it will be damaged in some way. We can see this clarinet's had a fair amount of use. Yeah. Which is kind of what, it's <laughs> what they're there for, but you've got to keep your clarinets clean, people. This is quite a high-end clarinet, and it's for quite a high-level player, so I imagine it's getting absolutely hammered, um, which will, in turn, mean that it needs a bit more service work. There you go. New cork is on. I've look. just trimmed around the edges with the blade just to neaten it up because you want it to be kind of in line and not visible from the top. Cool. But now... Because it was the same cork as came off, I'm hoping that when it goes back on, that mechanism will just be perfectly in line and not really need much more attention. Raising that key up and out of the way. And always checking that it's in line is super important. That cork can only do its job to an extent as long as the player is recognising that this little key needs to be totally in line. They put these lines here and here so that you can gauge that because that means that that yeah, it's not a flat, will be perfectly uh, in line. Yeah, it's awkward. You've got a you know a flat surface coming around a curve, so it needs to be quite lined up, or you're going to get weird things like that. But yeah, that feels pretty good to me. Obviously, cool. I'll give it a play test, make sure it's behaving itself. <laughs> 